Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. The reason I know so much about winning is because I've had to deal with so much losing. Everybody wants to win, but in order to know how to win, you gotta know how to lose. Because you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. But what do you gain from it? You've trained some of the greatest of the greats, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Charles Barkley, Dwayne Wade. So you know something about winning. You know something about sustained winning over time. Your mind has to immediately shift back because now you felt the taste of something that you can only get through winning. Are you willing to do it again? And that was one of Kobe's favorite words when it related to winning. He says, you have to be obsessed with whatever your win is. Be all in. Mm -hmm. Three greatest lessons I learned from Michael. Competing, accountability, and then winning at all levels. Winning at all levels, what does that mean? You just don't win in one arena. You win in your sports, you win in business, you win in your personal life. Other people win because you win. It isn't just about you. It's about being able to pull the team and show them what it feels like to win. And this isn't about playing basketball like Michael Jordan did, like the late great Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade. This is about having the mindset to win. When you fail, your feelings give you excuses. Your mind makes you more resilient. You look at when Kobe, his first playoff series, he had this horrible game where he shot like four or five straight air ball. Now, he could have came back next year and said, I got to prove everybody that's a man, you're too young, why'd you take? No, it was just like, you know what? That's on me. I have to own that moment. Now, I got to prove to myself I can overcome this because now everybody else is doubting me, but I can't doubt myself. Everybody told MJ, don't go to North Carolina. You'll never play. You shouldn't be here. And Michael went out and he said, I don't need to prove to coach. I don't need to prove to Buzz. I need to prove to myself that I belong here. I always say, you can have fear, but you can't have doubt. Opportunity. You have an opportunity of a lifetime. When you understand you have an opportunity, you, just, you play a little different. When I dropped out of high school and I started going to this church and let me speak, I picked up the mic. I was 16 years old, I picked up the mic. I'm not gonna say it was the best speech I ever did, but when I picked up that mic and got off that stage, I was like, yep, I can do it. So hear what I'm saying, opportunity. I got an opportunity, you got an opportunity. So here's the deal, when you have an opportunity, why would you give 80%? Why would you give 80%, 70%? Why wouldn't you always give 120%? It's sports, it's basketball. Why wouldn't you give 120%? You can't dictate if the ball gonna always go in. You can't dictate what kind of game you're gonna have. You can't dictate how your body is gonna respond to moving around. But you can dictate your what? You can dictate your good. You can dictate your, you can always give 120% effort. And every day I want you to wake up and not just go, I'm sweet like that. I want you to go, I'm not just going with skills. There's a one type of dude who feel like because he's gifted that it's just an automatic role for him. And let me tell y'all something. You are gifted, but you better humble yourself. You got to understand that pride come before fall. You may get it, but right now what? Oh, I can't hear y'all. You may get it, but right now what? You don't have it. That's not what gets you in the league. Not with what you were born with. You got skill and you got will. You got skill and you got will. Two total different things. You were born with certain things, but to get to the next level, and not just get to the next level, to stay at the next level, you got to have will. 
So when you play, you have to compete. I'm a high school dropout. My daddy wasn't in my life. But I found out I had a gift, then I found out your gift shall make room for you. And I'm like, you mean to tell me if I perfect this, I can eat and my kids can eat and my kids' kids can eat? From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. I know it's cold, but are you courageous enough to step into uncharted territory, beating on your crab day and night? I need you to disappear for the next 30 days. What does that look like? 720 hours dedicated to the future. Where focus goes, energy flows. The problem is you put too much energy into Netflix. You put too much energy into distractions. You put too much energy into entertainment. You put too much energy into things that are not feeding your purpose and destiny. Can you walk away from everything? Life has knocked you to the ground. You have survived the greatest traumas of your life. How tired are you of where you are right now? How bad do you want to get to that next level? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? Who are you willing to let go to get where it is that you want to be? See, everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to climb mountains. Everybody wants to be praised and celebrated. But nobody wants to sacrifice. Nobody wants to put in the work. Nobody wants to let go of every single distraction. Can you learn how to say no to what's hurting you? No to what's stopping you. No to the people that don't believe in you. The fakes and the phonies and the people that keep saying that they'll support you when you get there, but they leave you when you arrive. Why are you here? And what are you going to do about it? Because the truth of the matter is, we have a purpose, we have a destiny, we have fulfillment. We've got connections to make, we've got people to meet, we've got rooms to walk in, we've got tables to sit at. And I'm just wondering if you are willing, if you are courageous enough, if you have the faith, if you're bold enough to sit down for 30 days and write down what it is that's killing you. Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month, 720 hours. Imagine who you could be in 30 days. You got one life to live, rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. You need to be good at pattern recognition, and that's what gets somebody strong at anything. I mean, you look at, you know, why is Amazon doing so well? He realized one pattern was valued over anything else, convenience, right? If you look at Tom Brady, friend of mine, he, he's he got pattern recognition like nobody else at 43 years old. He's able to do things no one dreamed could be done. He's got more Super Bowl rings than any team. See, what do they see that none of us see? What's the pattern? Then you got to learn pattern utilization. It's one thing to see it. It's another thing to use it. And then if you're good after a while, you get to pattern creation. It's like if you learn to play the piano, most people play other people's music. And then there's a point you've learned so much that you're able to create. It really comes down to anyone can learn anything if it's important enough to you. So it's like my drive is not just for me. That wouldn't be enough because it's easy to meet your own needs. It's not that difficult. But if you can find something that you care about more than yourself, your daughter, your son, your family, your business, your mission, your community, whatever it is, that's really the secret to energy and vitality and strength and really learning. One of the things I want to do with people during this challenge is take things that seem so complex and make them so simple so you do it. Get it really simple, things you can do right now to change your life. You can go to experience it that day and then you get momentum. Day one, day two, day three, day four, and all of a sudden now what used to be hard to do is easy to do. And I think for anyone, you got to understand anyone can learn anything if you can just break it down to its simple core. And that's what I try to do most. And I'm just not willing to settle for a life without passion and aliveness. That's just like there's so much to learn. There's so much to grow. There's so much to give. And I'm, I'm wired to grow and give. And I, I, I think anybody gets wired to grow and give is going to have a really fulfilling life. It doesn't matter what you choose to do. You're going to be alive. A year ago... 
people thought we we're coming out of, you know, we've got vaccines now and we're coming out of COVID and it's going to be all over now. People are excited. But now after going through two years of this, there's a lot of people now that no longer have a compelling future. Like, you know, people talking about New Year's resolutions. Most people don't even have one because it's like they never followed through anyway. right? But at least they had something to look forward to. They're starting to get into learned helplessness. Learned helplessness yeah, is, is when something is so bad over and over again, you start thinking the problem's permanent. No problem is permanent. Or you start thinking the problem's pervasive because I haven't handled my finances, my whole world's over. Or because my relationship's bad, my whole world's over. Your life is bigger than that. My goal right now is to shake that up for people. People need a new perspective, and you can't do it by just sitting and thinking. You gotta move your body, you gotta change your energy and your focus. But if I get you into a higher state of being, mentally, emotionally, physically, then all of a sudden you start remembering who you are and you start coming up with answers that you never even thought were possible before. The idea of remembering who you are is something incredibly powerful. There was a uh, Batman cartoon where he gets amnesia and he gets put in like a, a camp, basically, a work camp, and he can't get out. And he, he feels stuck and weak and, you know, afraid. And then something happens, I don't remember what, triggers his memory. And he remembers that he's Batman. Just in remembering that he's Batman, he then takes the actions to fight his way out. And look, I know it's a cartoon, but that has always resonated with me. And whenever I'm feeling anxious about something, I always tell myself, remember who you are. But you're really talking about the most important concept in lasting change, identity. We all define ourselves in certain ways. So you start where you are and you do what's in front of you, you do what's next, then you keep growing until you start to discover, hey, this is my real passion. And it can change. People go for five, six, seven years, and then they usually question their business, their career, their, their body, their relationships. And then one of two things happens. They change direction and feel renewed, or they go, no, I got a great deal here. What the hell's wrong with me? And they recommit and they get stronger. But that's life. And if you don't grow, I don't give a damn how much you got going for you, you're going to be miserable. I think as early on, I realized, that, you know, one of the things you have to understand about life is everything changes and everything ends. And that kind of sounds heavy on the front end, but it's a truth. If everything changes and everything ends, number one, it should make you appreciate what you have right now. And then my view is what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. And I think that's how we have to navigate. But most of us, most of us have been conditioned not to, to take a risk. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. One word, progress. I got three words for you. Shut it down. Log out of the social media. Get off the internet. Unplug and evaluate where you are and where you're supposed to be. And I know you're broken and I know you're tired and I know you're weary and I know you're confused and, and I know that you've got questions and I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see but if you shut it down you can heal you're standing at the precipice the edge of the greatest move in your life and and, and the time is now like never before to take a leap of faith it takes faith to jump off of the edge. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Can you disappear for 30 days? The first person that needs to be influenced in your life is you. It's you. You can't lead anybody. You can't go anywhere unless you have awakened yourself on the inside to follow a specific plan. Write it out. I need you to disappear. Life is not you to the ground. There are people that have tried to bury you alive and you survive. Are you bold enough? Are you radical enough in your hunger and your thirst to go after what it is that you believe is yours? Are you crazy enough? Are you courageous enough to disappear for 30 days? Come back and shock the world!
Can you suffer now that you live the rest of your life a champion? Here's the reality. You will always be where you are until you acknowledge the leeches in your life. It is time for you to navigate through the conversation, comb through your context. There are people that are taking from you everything, taking your time, taking your energy, taking your thought life, reprogramming and reconditioning you to do something that you have not been destined to do. And the time is now to get tied to people that are going to help to position you and lock you in a place where you can fulfill purpose and destiny for 30 days days, 720 hours. Imagine if you began to write down the people that have not fed into your purpose, the people that have not fed into your destiny, the people that have lied in your face, the fakes, the phonies, the frauds. Can you identify what has kept you broken? What has kept you broke? What has kept you defeated? What has kept you covered under the blankets of anxiety? and stress and overwhelm. Your DNA has been mutated by people that are beneath you and it's nothing wrong with having people in your life that you serve, that you love, but you're trying to make business moves with people that don't think like you, they don't walk like you, they don't sacrifice like you, they're not willing to put in the blood, the sweat, the tears behind closed doors. A man is rewarded in public for what he does in private. Think over the things you've discussed with people. Go through the process. Go through the mud. Run in the rain. Dance in the snow. Inhale. Exhale. I know it's cold on the other side, but it's time for you to cross over because you're too comfortable. Disappear for 30 days. Come back and shock the world. Who you are today has gotten you as far as you're going to get. If you're going to get any further, you've got to reinvent yourself. And if you're going to reinvent yourself, you've got to shut it down for 30 days. You still keep trying to walk into your future fractured, broken, hurting. You need to walk into your future whole, conditioned, ready to grab the people that believed in you before you made it to the top. Go back and get them. But first, you've got to condition yourself. You're fractured. You're broken. You're under anxiety and depression. And you've even been borderline suicidal at times. You've lost loved ones. Come on. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to that person that's tired of where they are and you are bold enough, you are crazy enough, you are courageous enough to shut it down for 30 days. You've talked about it enough. You've talked to your haters about it. You've talked to your supporters about it. You've posted about it. You've shared about it. You've written about it. Now it's time to put the work in. Disappear for 30 days.